All right, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm Herek, I'm a software engineer at uh, Pix4D in uh, Lausanne. And today we're going to talk about Terraform and uh, mostly about infra infrastructure as code. So um, I'm a web developer, a software engineer, however you want to call it. I'm a motorcycle junkie. I play Magic the Gathering. I have way too many cards. It takes too much space in my apartment. And uh, most of all, I like cloud computing. As I said, I work for uh, Pix4D. Uh, Pix4D is, um, so I forgot uh, my notes here. So it's a professional, uh, uh, Pix4D specialized in professional photogrammetry and uh, drone mapping. So um, for those that don't know photogrammetry, um, if we take the Wikipedia definition, it's the art and science of making measurements from photographs. So you take uh, pictures and uh, you can measure, make measurements, analysis, and everything. Oh, sure. Start. Everything good? Nope. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. So. Um, yeah, photogrammetry, that's, that's what, where I was. A quick example, just for the demo, for the show. Um, you can take your drone, fly around Christ the Redeemer in uh, Rio, take some, nice, uh, take some nice shots, put it through a uh, software, and get a 3D model. So that's what uh, we can do with photogrammetry. Right. So today, um, we'll talk about a few things. First of all, we'll talk about what's infrastructure as code. Uh, I will uh, say uh, IAC for short. Uh, what is Terraform and how does it work? And then uh, I'll do some uh, a live example, like for real. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, what's infrastructure as code. Uh, that's why we're here. So infrastructure as code has multiple benefits. Instead of um, the old way uh, to do um, infrastructure, um, you'll have a system administrator who would, uh, he would come to a data center, hook up a machine, install everything, make sure it works, and be like, OK, great, uh, it works. Now we can put your code in it. Um, it's, it's a nice thing. It usually works. But then you're like, um, excuse me, you forgot something. Where's the test environment? Ah, OK, you take another machine, you do the same thing. And uh, there's many ways you can make things wrong by doing this. It's not uh, very easy to replicate. And uh, then the database administrator has to do the same, and the guy that manages the cache has to do the same, and the storage and everything. And then you, have, you end up with an infrastructure that makes no sense. By storing uh, your infrastructure in code, you have basically all the advantages of code. You can, yeah. <laughs> so the main benefits, it's auditable. It's just like code, right? So you can read it. You can do code reviews on it, uh, go, th go through QA. It's repeatable. Since it's code, you have multiple environments. You can just replicate them indefinitely, and it will always be the same. And it's dependable. Because if you can't audit or uh, recreate your infrastructure easily, you can depend on it. It's not stable. And also, it, it avoids this. You go on vacation and you forgot that you left a very uh, expensive. Oh, sorry. You forgot that you left a very expensive um, web uh, um, virtual machine running, and uh, for two weeks it runs and it costs a lot of money. So these are main uh, advantages when you manage it uh, through code. So versioning, if you manage it as code, you can put it in Git, for example. You can collaborate on it, make pull requests on your infrastructure. You can integrate it in your uh, continuous integration pipeline. So if you have uh, things like uh, Jenkins or Concourse, for uh, those that know what it is, um, it is very easy to put your, infra your infrastructure code in it and uh, when you want to deploy your infrastructure, it's just like deploying your web application or, or anything else. 
So it, you can automate it and you can automate your recovery process, something that's really difficult to do when you're working with hardware directly. And uh, no need to repair. If something's broken, destroy it and be, uh, rebuild it again. Now, um, what's Terraform? All right, so Terraform is a tool developed by uh, Ashicorp. You may know this company. Uh, they created Vagrant and um, some other things like Vault, for example. They, they make some very nice products. It's a tool that's developed in Go. And um, it's made to provision infrastructure from a low-level component, such as virtual machines, storage and ne networking, but also higher level components, such as uh, DNS entries or uh, access rights for your infrastructure. You can manage all that. All right. So Terraform is open source. Uh, it's available on GitHub. And uh, one of the, God damn it. And uh, one of the advantages of uh, Terraform is uh, it, diff it supports a lot of uh, providers. So for example, AWS, so it's uh, Amazon Web Services for those that don't know, is um, um, one provider. DigitalOcean, uh, you can create virtual machine on DigitalOcean, it's another provider. And uh, Terraform supports 95 different providers as of yesterday. And uh, I'm not counting community providers. Since it's open source, people can develop whatever they want and add it on uh, Terraform. You can even develop your custom solution for your infrastructure. So if you have some local servers, you want to use Terraform to do that, you can create your own provider and uh, hope it works. So um, tonight's plan, okay. We'll talk about a few things. Uh, first of all, I forgot to ask, um, so who has already worked with the infrastructure as code before? Uh, someone here is lying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so who has heard of uh, Terraform before uh, this talk or played with it? Played with it? Played. Okay, played, yeah, play, okay. Okay, so a lot of people don't know what it is. Um, so tonight, uh, what I will do, <laughs> and, um, but uh, why am I not full screen here is a question. All right, it's better. Um, we'll, we'll discover a language, a configuration language called, called HCL. It's a Ashikov configuration language. Uh, we'll create, um, we'll, I'll show you how to create resources. So in a Terraform, a resource is, for example, a virtual machine. A virtual machine is a resource. A load balancer, it's a resource as well. So I'll show you how to create them and uh, how to deploy them uh, using just your command line. Now, uh, after that, I will show you how to edit them because uh, what's the point uh, to have an infrastructure if you can't make it better through time? And if it's not broken, you break it and you make it better. Uh, after that, we'll make this uh, our code reproducible. So we'll make you, you will take what we created and make two versions that are the same. So we'll make uh, like a production and a staging environment, if you will. Then we'll delete everything because um, AWS instances cost them money. So uh, if I don't need to let them run, I will destroy them. And then uh, we'll have a beer and uh, talk about uh, cloud, web, and uh, beer, if you want. I really need to stop that. <laughs> all right. First of all, we'll talk about uh, what, what HCL is. Because it's not something that uh, you see everywhere. Basically, uh, the only people using HCL is Ashikorp. It's in, it's in the name. So it's a configuration language. So you can see it's just as a YAML, JSON, XML, whatever. Um, from uh, their own word, these are not mine. It's uh, designed to be written and modified by humans. I'll let you be the judge of that. <laughs> and uh, it's designed to allow uh, JSON as an input so that it's also machine friendly. Uh, HCL has a backward uh, compatibility with uh, the JSON. 
So JavaScript object notation. So it's uh, easy to interface uh, HCL with many other tools uh, or convert uh, existing uh, configurations that are written uh, in JSON, uh, whatever, and to convert them to HCL. If you've ever written uh, Nginx configuration files, for example, looks a lot uh, similar. So, um, simple example from HCL. So here, um, we define a resource, and then we give it an uh, AWS instance. So this part uh, is, we said to Terraform, we want to create uh, a virtual machine on AWS. We can't choose the name that goes in there. It's uh, specific to the provider. And then we give it a name. I will uh, name it example. This is for you. This is the name you want to give to your virtual machine. Um, underneath, you have all the parameters of your resource. The most obvious one is the uh, instant type. Uh, for those that don't know what um, AWS uh, is, or if they haven't played with uh, AWS before, uh, an EC2 instance, uh, it's a virtual machine in the cloud, and they have uh, different, different versions of uh, those machines. You can have small machines, bigger machines, some machines that have a lot of uh, computing power, some that have a lot of memory. Uh, I actually have like a list here. So this is um, all the instances you can deploy on uh, Amazon. It goes from a simple little machine with a 500 meg of RAM that doesn't cost too much hourly, and it, it can go down to um, machines that are a bit more, um, let's say, beefy. <laughs> yeah, also you have, some of those you pay $26 an hour, so um, better be worth it. Uh, so the instance, instance uh, type, so you just define it. And uh, AMI, uh, AMI is an um, Amazon uh, machine image. Uh, if you've ever downloaded an operating system, like an ISO file from uh, Ubuntu or Microsoft, it's basically the same idea. So it's the image of the operating system you want to run on the machine. So this is the basic overview of, the, of um, HCL uh, structure. So now I will do this live. <laughs> so I will switch to my, all right, great. No, I forgot to open something. I think it's here, all right. This I can delete, okay. Just to see, is it big enough for you to see? Yes. Has anyone a problem with seeing the text? No, okay, perfect. All right, first things you want to do, um, what cloud provider are you going to work with or what service do you want to work with? In Terraform, you can work with many services. In the same file, you can say, I want to work with AWS, DigitalOcean, um, Sentry, I want to work with uh, Jump Cloud, I want to work with uh, Microsoft Azure, you can define them in it. Because uh, actually Terraform, when you install Terraform, um, nothing works by default. <laughs> so I'm going to do a first step. So just uh, to um, make things clear here, I already installed Terraform on my machine. I'm not going to show that. Uh, you can just Google that. And I already configured my uh, Amazon Web Service command line to function on my machine because I don't want to show you this and show you my keys. Uh, this is private, all right? So first of all, we'll define a provider, all right? So what provider do we want to use to, uh, this evening? CWS, because um, that's what I came prepared for. So we'll define AWS, all right. And um, one of the most important thing uh, with AWS is uh, to specify uh, the region it's gonna run in. Um, AWS has uh, many uh, data centers around the world. Uh, and you can choose where, they want, where you want them to run. Uh, for me, just to make sure everything works for the demo, I'm gonna choose US East 1. So the default one in the most tutorials on the internet, you will find this one. They have data centers in um, Europe if uh, data protection is like uh, important for you. So great, we have a provider now. 
we need to actually install the provider. So Terraform doesn't, can't use AWS by itself. It needs to download some code to be able to use it. So the, I'm going to invoke Terraform and init the project. It's in an empty repository, great. Uh, where am I? Oh, sorry. Okay, this is better. All right. So, Terraform, init. So it's here, it's gonna download the plugin for provider AWS. Shouldn't take too much time. If, uh, yeah, great. Terraform has been su successfully initialized. So now, if I look at my files, I have a .terraform folder, and uh, this folder will uh, contain uh, what we need to use AWS. Let's go back in our code. All right, so I have a provider. Great, now I want to create something with it. So um, we talked about virtual, virtual machines, so let's do just that. I create a resource, uh, yes, resource. Thanks for the complete. So we want an AWS, uh, sorry, instance that I will name Web Mardi. Um, great, so as we've seen before, uh, to declare an AWS instance, we need to give it uh, an instance type. So instance type. And I'm gonna go for something small. And uh, then we need to tell him uh, what operating system we're gonna use. And this is the tricky part. Because this, this is something that's really hard to remember because you have to give it uh, something that we call um, a d a data. So a resource is something you create. Data is something that you get somewhere and use in uh, your uh, infrastructure. So what kind of data do we want here? We want the, a reference to the virtual machine that uh, operating system that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna define a new data. It's an AWS. Always, uh, so every resource or data uh, takes a um, provider uh, first. And then we want an AMI. I'm cheating here, I have notes because uh, <laughs> it's hard to remember this uh, all the time. And I'll just call it Ubuntu because we're gonna create an Ubuntu um, server. Great. So, um, I, like I like to live on the edge. So I'll take the most recent one. True. Now, how do we get a virtual machine? Uh, in uh, AWS, they have uh, references. Uh, they have, uh, you can get them by name. Uh, but the, mo the easiest way to get it is uh, actually um, to go through the documentation. That, that's easy, the easy, easiest way to get something. So take this and go here. It's always difficult to get this kind of reference because there's a lot to type and you're never sure what you have to, to get. Um, I'm just gonna change this because uh, 1404 is kind of old. 16.04 and it's not trusty. <laughs> it's Xenio. No, it's in caps. Xenio. Much better. All right, we have a, now we have a data, we have an AMI, we can use it. So I'm gonna go back in my instance here. And uh, okay, how do I use this data? I can't just type uh, use Ubuntu. This doesn't work, all right? Mm -hmm. Here I'm gonna call um, kind of a variable. So I'm gonna use the dollar sign, open this, and uh, I want the AWS, uh, oh right, sorry. It's data, AWS AMI, Ubuntu, dot ID. I think, yeah, it's dot ID. All right, great, now we've defined, uh, now we've defined actually our infrastructure. Congratulations, you've created uh, your first infrastructure here, you have a virtual machine. Awesome, let's deploy this. So, there's a command for um, applying the changes. It's Terraform, 
apply. This will generate a list of all the changes it wants to do and prompt you yes or no. We're going to start with something uh, simpler. We're going to plan. Plan is just going to say, OK, this is the state of your infrastructure as it's currently. And this is the new state. This will change. This will not change. This will be destroyed. So if I do Terraform plan, it's going to update my state. All right. So let's scroll back up. All right. Terraform will perform the following actions. AWS in AWS instance, WebMardi, what we defined. Takes an AMI. Takes a T2 micro type of a virtual machine. Pl what's the plan? The plan is to add something, change nothing, destroy nothing. I'm going to roll with that. Plan, apl uh, plan. Terraform apply. Uh, sorry, I will just clear. Terraform apply. So it will basically do the same thing, except that it will prompt us to take action. Enter a value. You can enter only yes. If you type S, yes with two S, it won't work. They want to make sure you don't destroy your infrastructure just because you typed a little too fast. So let's do this, all right? Now it's going to compute some things. And I can go back here. Go to my EC2 management console. So this is the AWS uh, console for those that have never seen this. And uh, great, we have something here. We have an instance. So I have a virtual server that's being created. Instant state, spending, it's initializing. Great, things are working. Um, sometimes it takes time. When you have a bigger infrastructure, um, can get uh, quite long sometimes, especially if you destroy everything and recreate everything, if you have a lot, lot of resources. We're talking uh, in the hour maybe for some things. It can take quite some time. Uh, so great, it's running. We have, a, we have a machine. It has a public IP. Great, awesome. But there's something weird here. Can someone uh, point to something that's bad? It's yeah, it's missing a name. So this is a part of, a, of uh, the talk where we'll apply change to our infrastructure. So we'll go back to our instance Oops. and um, add a name. All right. So this is something you kind of have to know. Um, of course, when uh, you create your infrastructure, you have your nose on the documentation all the time. So I'll create add a tag. I'll add tags. The tag here uh, is uh, basically name. It's case sensitive. Hmm? What uh, did I screw up here? Wrong block. Oh yeah, wrong block. No, I'm in a provider. Thanks, James. All right, tags name. All right. Shall I call it uh, Webmardi Rocks, for example? Avec, with Z and S mixed together? All right. So now we've changed the infrastructure. Uh, we need to apply those changes. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to clear that. Terraform. Apply. All right. I will apply this. Seems a good idea. So now what Terraform will do is uh, going to read the state. Uh, it's going to see, OK, a virtual machine is running. It already exists. I don't need to destroy it or to create it. It already exists. I just need to change a few things. So here, instead of a green line, we have a yellow one. It says, OK, it exists. I just want to add this name. OK, let's do this. So we'll modify a few things. And if I go back. Here and reload. Bim. I have a name. And this is great. But ah, I'm typing uh, a name directly in the code. It's kind of bad. Don't do that. So you can use the uh, variables in a Terraform. 
So I will create a folder, a uh, folder, sorry, uh, a file. A new file. All right. I'll call it variables.tf. So a tf is the extension uh, for Terraform files. There's actually two different ex uh, file extension. Uh, you use .tf for your files and you, you use .tf vars uh, if you want to uh, give variables to the script because if I define a variable here, like, um, don't remember here, variable, um, let's call it ec2 name. All right, the variable, we can give it a type and it's gonna be a string, right? Character string. What happened if I try to apply this? Oh, I forgot to, all right. It's gonna ask me for a value because I defined a variable, but I gave him nothing. So here I would have to type a variable. I could type anything. The variable isn't used anywhere. So it's, it's gonna do nothing. It's gonna say, okay, nothing to change. Great, what are you doing? So here, if I want, I can use this variable. So I'm gonna go here, use my dollar sign, my brackets, and uh, var ec2 name. Let's try this again. Terraform apply. And here I have to give a value. Let's call it webmrd rocks part two. It's gonna refresh the state again. All right, great. Let's apply the old. Sorry, mistyped something. Ah, oh, god damn it. Part two. So while this is running, I can show you other things. So great, but if you have a lot of variables, every time you have to give them in the script, it's not, uh, it's not great. You lose a lot of time, especially some variables never really change. So we're gonna create a new file called, uh, um, don't remember, I named it last time, but terraform.tfvars. And here I'm gonna say, okay, ec2 name, was it the name of our variable? Yeah, ec2 name. Is going to be called webmardi. All right. Yeah, this I don't need to apply because I will change it. Now I define what kind of variable I want in this file, and here I can give the actually the variables that I want. Uh, don't try to give it something else than a, than a string. Don't give it a map or something else. Terraform won't be happy. Let's Terraform apply this. Refreshing state. All right, perfect. It took my variables from the file. Everything works. So it's, you can see it's really easy to apply, to give change, to apply changes to your infrastructure. It's just, you edit your code and you apply and things simply work. Most of the time. <laughs> this is a simple example, of course. Uh, you can create more complex infrastructure. Um, so now, talking about complexity, uh, this is cool, but we have, a, we have a single instance, right? We have uh, nothing else. So what if I want uh, um, a simple EC2 instance for production and a simple EC2 instance for staging? So I will introduce something called workspaces. Workspaces, you can see it uh, as two different environments uh, with, and each environment has its, has its own Terraform state. So there's a command that can that allow us, it's Terraform workspace. And this will give us all the available command for the workspaces. So we can create a new one, list all the workspaces. We can select one, so which one we want to work in and we can delete. Uh, a workspace. So when you 
create a new ter you initialize a Terraform project. No, ter typo. Ter I can do it. <laughs> Terraform. All right. When you initialize, you have the default one all the time. It's, uh, it's how it works. So we'll create a new one. Workspace. Uh, this. New. And let's call it production. All right. Created and switch to work, workspace production. This is important. Um, something I suggest. Uh, if uh, you decide to use Terraform uh, at your job or for your project, create a script for uh, Bash or Fish or whatever shell you use to specify what workplace, wor workspace you're using. Because it's really easy to do, oh, I'm going to Terraform destroy my staging infrastructure and you're not on the right one. <laughs> and one, once, you've, uh, once you've typed yes and entered, it's the end, <laughs> all right? So great, I'm on uh, my uh, own state. So the difference here, the state is empty. If I Terraform apply, I don't have a virtual machine. He hasn't created anything, he switched workspace. So if I Terraform apply, it's gonna refresh state and uh, basically tell me, I have nothing. But you defined an EC2 instance in your files. Let's create one. Okay, let's do that. And I create. Let's go back to our uh, here. All right, great. Two instances. They're on the same account, but they haven't been created by the same uh, Terraform state. Um, now we have another problem. They have the same name. <laughs> and you say to someone, eh, just uh, SSH into the production machine and fix it. Yeah, great, thanks. So, um, we talked about variables. Um, variables are cool. It's, uh, let's say that it's use, use, useful. And um, let's just add something to the name. So we still want our um, instances to be called WebMRD. This doesn't change. But I'd like to have WebMRD default and WebMRD production. Um, luckily, um, Terraform is nice and give us um, I don't remember if it's var terraform or just terraform. Uh, it will yell at me if it doesn't work. Terraform.workspace. And this will actually just return a, st a string of the current workspace name. So, oh, well, oh, oh. Yeah, still works. All right. So if I go back here. All right, one was added. We've seen this. Let's uh, read a form apply. Yeah, if you, d if you uh, work with a Terraform, you'll type Terraform apply a lot. I suggest you create a macro on your keyboard to just make it faster. Great, it uses our workspace uh, name. Let's apply this. So it's gonna run, do its thing. And now we know which instance is production one. So now we've created a totally replicable uh, environment, right? If I dis decide to destroy a uh, workspace, I can just create it again. And um, we talked about, um, you know, versioning and everything. Now imagine you just have a, you, you have Jenkins, you have a continuous, continuous integration pipeline. And uh, basically for some part of your infrastructure, you want to do testing. In the pipeline, you say, OK, create a workspace with uh, this branch name, just like in uh, Git or, uh, in, uh, or in Mercurial, and build the infrastructure and make a perfect uh, clone of it. And uh, that's the, all the power of using tools like Terraform. So now I'm going to clear things. All right. Um, now, let's nuke things from orbit. I don't want to keep my uh, Terraform uh, defaults running. So don't forget, workspaces are important. If you list, it will say, OK, you have two uh, workspaces. 
this is the one you're running on. I want to destroy the default one. So I'm gonna. <laughs> ah, mistyped again. <laughs> ah, goddamn. Terraform workspace cards. I can do it. Select default. All right. I don't like this uh, server. It's causing me problem. Terraform destroy. So this is fine because I'm just running a single instance. Um, be careful when you're applying this command. Um, because if I do this, here I have a single uh, instance. But if I have multiple resources, Terraform Destroy will just prompt you. If you type yes, everything will be destroyed. So there's a nice command that in Terraform. Um, it's called target. Sometimes when you're working on, um, on your infrastructure, destroying everything and uh, recreating everything takes time. And um, maybe you like to drink coffee uh, between uh, them, but when it takes 45 minutes each time, it's a lot of coffee to drink. So they have this target command where you can specify which resource you want to destroy or to create. So here it doesn't really make sense. I have only one thing. So basically, it's the same command, ex except that it will be longer if I use this one. But I will just show it for the, uh, the example. Terraform, I will destroy, and I will target. And the target takes AWS instance. It takes the resource type and the resource name. So uh, AWS instance dot webmardi. And if I had like a big uh, data center, uh, it would just destroy this single instance, not everything else. Um, this is particularly very, very important. If you create, for example, your, uh, if you create DNS uh, with Terraform and you destroy them, if you recreate them, they have to propagate again. So uh, be mindful of these kind of things. It happened to me uh, once, it's not funny. So, no. Nope. I just I cancelled it because I made a space before the yes. Yes. All right. Destroying. If I go to my uh, EC2 console, my instance is shutting down. So what's amazing here is a. Uh, all I did, creating, giving name and everything, I don't have to go to uh, Amazon's UI and uh, click everywhere and uh, create uh, instances and select what I want to use. And this takes a lot of time. So you, yeah, you, you can make things rep uh, replicable indefinitely because making an, um, an infrastructure that you can just recreate or redestroy at will multiple times if you have to go to this UI, yeah, you're going to make mistakes along the way. So, wow. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much everything for the live demo. Um, I ask yeah, go ahead. To, like, code and code and yeah. Can, you, can we use code to do this? Like, you, you did it manually, but can, can we use the code? Uh, what do you mean, use the code to delete VMs? Use the instance from the description and to apply. Uh, wait, uh, repeat, please. Can we remove destroy the machine mm -hmm. by removing the resource from the code? Yes. If you remove it, it uh, will uh, remove everything. Is yeah. Um, no. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, so the main difference here is, for example, here I destroyed uh, my entire workspace. So there's no um, virtual machine running. But I can can create it again if I want. If you remove it from the code, it will destroy it, if you, and, uh, but it will also destroy it if you apply changes. Because it will realize, oh, in the code, this machine doesn't exist anymore. So it will remove it, plain, plain and simple. So if you want to, uh, for example, let's say you deploy the cache server with Terraform. And uh, you don't need it in your infrastructure anymore, like at all. Like uh, you can just 
scrap it. You can remove it from the code. But if you terraform apply and it's removed from the code, it, will, it won't create a, a new machine, a new cache server. I don't know if uh, that's clear for you. OK. Um, great, great, great. Uh, I think uh, that's pretty much uh, it for the live demo. Don't think I have much else to say. I skipped the prerequisite, but it's fine. Um, so thank you, uh, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, if uh, anybody has questions, I guess uh, it's, uh, it's now. I have uh, some time. So ask away. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you showed us how to, to create, destroy, and apply some changes on your server. Um, how do you do to, to start some script to initialize some, some stuff on the server? Yeah, right. OK, so this is something I skipped. Thanks for reminding me. Um, Terraform uh, is a tool to deploy infrastructure. It's not configuration management. So you can, if you create a, a whole bunch of virtual machines, they're just that, virtual machines. They, they, they run this OS from uh, AWS. If you want to deploy things in it, you have to use another tool, like Ansible, for example, for those that know what it is. Um, you will deploy your infrastructure with Terraform, and Ansible will deploy, uh, will use scripts to deploy, for example, if you need Nginx servers on your machine, or if you need to deploy some specific software. Uh, Terraform doesn't, can't do this. It's not the tool. Uh, so you have to use another tool in conjunction to Terraform to achieve this goal. Yeah, sure. Or, or you could use your own AMI. Sorry? Or you could deploy your own AMI. Uh, sure, well, you can deploy your own uh, AMI. Um, so I've never done this before. I know it's possible. Uh, I've seen a tutorial uh, on how to do it. Never implemented myself, but uh, yes, sure, you can. It's not a trivial task, but sure. Yes? Is there an abstraction across providers? Or it no. Okay. So it's a provider specific. So you can't uh, say, I want a load balancer, six uh, servers, and a database server, and deploy it on AWS, DigitalOcean, and Azure. You can do that. So it's, uh, it's really provider specific. You can do multi-cloud, but you have to create your infrastructure for each cloud. Uh, that would be perfect if, it, if you had a layer of abstraction for sure, but it would be also a lot less flexible uh, because AWS, for example, has a lot, a lot of feature that other cloud providers don't offer. So, you can yes, you could do that with uh, modules, but it's uh, uh, another part of uh, Terraform. I'm not going to talk about uh, this now. But still, uh, modules can solve everything because there's still features you can't find in uh, some cloud providers. So in any way, you have limitations. So mo most of the time, uh, I don't know all the companies in the world, but I don't know many companies that use a lot of multi-cloud uh, deployment. So any other question? Yes, in the back. Uh, when you showed that you can, uh, like, uh, when you apply yeah. some variables during the apply process in order to, for example, change the name or something like that, like that can you also do that with, like, for, for example, a heat condition? So that during the apply, it asks you if you want something to go either on Azure no. or on AWS? No, you can't do that kind of things. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, this has been a big, big complaint uh, of uh, Terraform users. Uh, you can do um, logic, really, in uh, HCL script. Okay, so uh, can you have, uh, like, uh, workspace-specific uh, variables? Um, yes, you can do that. Uh, this is something you can achieve. I can show you. So this is very important. Um, this is something, yeah, I could talk about. I have a few, uh, quite, uh, do I have a few minutes left? Yes, yeah, great. Um, OK, let's say, uh, for example, I want, you want to define um, a variable that depends on your workspace. So, I don't know, let's just call it test. Oh, this is not scripted. Um, so, you can give it a type, and uh, you can give it type map. So, for example, here I can define test. 
and uh, I don't remember the syntax for it. Uh, oh, sorry. Whoa, a bit slow. Um, can't really remember the syntax. Uh, sorry. Hmm? No, I'm just gonna. I'm lazy. Input variables. Oh, type map. Map. All right. Here. So, uh, as I showed you uh, before, you can uh, define. Uh, you can use the Terraform workspace uh, to get the name of the workspace uh, as a string. Oh, it it was here. All right. Variable. Um, okay. So, for example, God damn it. Yeah, I think the OBS uh, is kind of killing my machine. <coughs> I can kill it, yeah, because it's, uh, it's killing my... Uh, oh, come on. All right, goodbye OBS. All right, oh, much better. All right, so for example, uh, you can have a production. Um, um, I don't know, one, and uh, <laughs> default, two. All right, I hope my uh, map is correct. Uh, and here, for example, you could uh, say uh, the name is uh, var, oh, I will remove this, it's var.test, and since it's a map, you can, uh, I, no, I think it's like this, terraform dot workspace. So here it will uh, go take uh, uh, a variable depending on your... Um, okay. So if I go here, I do clear and I do platform apply. Oh right, I destroyed my workspace. But um, we're Mardi too, right. So I'm uh, in a good uh, workspace, it's taking the, the default, so it takes two. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Can we just go back to VS Code? Yeah. Uh, can you use variables inside the rest of Flight? So, for example, like online five, instead of using of putting an AWS instance, uh, can you use variables? No. Here? no, you can do that. No. The provider name uh, can't, uh, can dynamically uh, gener generate this. You wanted to deploy like multi cloud stuff by declaring uh, variables dynamically? <laughs> Yeah, some people have thought about that and it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, there's many issues on uh, Terraform on GitHub that asks for this. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, there's going to be an update of uh, HCL soon. H, uh, and the Terraform, sorry, Terraform 012 should bring uh, some cool features, but uh, should have landed yet, but nobody really knows. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Nope. Thanks, Eric. Thank you very much.